So I, I have a few few slides here uh, just to go through some of the, the basic concepts of, of WinShuttle Shuttle Studio, what, what, what it is, uh, how to work with, uh, with the transaction module, and then we'll quite quickly, we'll move on to the actual product and then we'll go through a, a brief demonstration of developing a simple automation script with WinShuttle and then we'll talk a bit about how to how to run scripts, how to publish them, how to use the Excel add-in, things like that. And I will try to, we'll keep it relatively simple, we'll not go into too much of the technical details. We have uh, upcoming sessions will be where we will be covering like some of the more, I guess, more advanced things. Uh, but here we'll we'll try to to focus on the on the main key concepts just to give everybody a good idea of of, of what what, what WinShuttle Studio is and what it can do and and so on. And then uh, hopefully we'll we'll have I think we'll try to have a couple of minutes at the end of the webinar for for some questions if if needed. But uh, without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> So, uh, so what is WinShuttle Studio? It's, it is a SAP process automation tool uh, intended for uh, for business users. So this means it's it's not super technical. It by no means it, it doesn't not require like a degree in IT or programming or anything like that. Of course, uh, a technical background can be can be helpful, but. Uh, the user interface and the, the process of creating creating these so-called automation scripts is a fairly visual process. So it it should be pretty 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 easy for anybody who is just uh, familiar with working uh, with SAP uh, as a business user. It should be relatively simple for for anybody to get into to WinShuttle and start start recording recording scripts. And, and I think that's one of the strong strong points of, of WinShuttle Studio in, in that it doesn't necessarily require a lot of, lot of effort or support from your, your local IT side, as, as the, the business users can, can quite easily get started developing scripts. Script development is a, is a relatively simple three-step process where you start with an uh, active recording. Basically, you, you, you go through the whatever process or T-code T you are uh, automating you go through that those steps in, in just just using the normal sap user interface and you will have wind shuttle running in the background recording what you are doing what buttons you are pressing what fields what what kind of data you are entering what fields you are using and so on so it's it's a recording of the actual sap business process then once that the recording is complete wind shuttle will automatically build an automation script based on that recording and then all you will need to do is is create an Excel template, which we call the map face, where we are basically mapping Excel columns to SAP fields, which is uh, in its simplest forms, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping fields. And then all that's left to do is start running the script with some test data first to see, see that the script is working and uh, verify that the script is doing uh, what it is that you would want it to do. So there's really no no programming requ required when you are developing these these scripts. The security of WinShuttle is based on on on, on the SAP authorization. So you and this is something we'll I'll, I'll I'll talk a bit more about this once we get to the actual product demonstration. But it's all based on SAP authorization. So whatever security constraints you have in place on the SAP side, all, all of those will be respected by WinShuttle. So so when you are working with the with the WinShuttle Studio and recording scripts, you you can't do anything that you 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 wouldn't normally be able to do in, in that T code in SAP. So you can only only access those T codes that you're authorized to access. And when you are working in those, you can only do things that you would normally be able to do in SAP in, in those same T codes. And uh, the last point here, it is also integrates with uh, with Microsoft Excel. There's a, an Excel add-in. So then, then the, the, the end users, the people who are then running the automation scripts that the developer users have uh, developed. All they really need is to have the Excel template and they can do all the, run the scripts, perform all the, all the, all those things 
directly from uh, within uh, Excel, which makes it really, really simple for, for those end, end users. It's, um, it's a feature-rich application. In, in, in this, um, this uh, introductory webinar, we'll, like I said, we'll be just covering like the main key concepts of how to record and build scripts. But there are, are uh, of course, it has a original studio comes with uh, with a quite long list of features that you can help you create more more complex automation solutions. You can you have all these rules and conditions that you can add to your scripts later on to make to create more more dynamic solutions. You have uh, Windows Studio has tools to help with validating data, backing up data. Uh, it comes built in with error management tools. It has uh, support for features like long texts and file attachments, which which can be quite uh, quite uh, challenging to automate using other 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 automation solutions or tools. So, and these are are some of the topics that we'll be covering in in, in the upcoming webinar. So we have a separate webinar where we where we will be looking at uh, how to work with long texts, for instance. We have we'll have another webinar focusing on the on the condition and uh, and rules side of Windows Studio. So if you are interested in, in in those kinds of things, want to learn more about how to create more more complex solutions, those those web webinars will be good to 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 register for and join and have a have a look how to how to work with all those features. But for this introductory webinar, we'll try to keep it relatively simple. Uh, and uh, before we jump into the product, just a few few words about uh, the different modules and, and licensing. Uh, and then this might be, or especially if you have worked with the previous versions of WinShuttle in the past, like WinShuttle's Transaction 10, 10.x versions. Previously, these all were uh, different applications. You had a different uh, different installers, different programs for transaction query and direct. But now these are all contained as modules in the in the in the new WinShuttle Studio. So WinShuttle Studio is now just a single suite of applications, a single installer that you install on, on, on the user's PC. It doesn't matter if it's a developer user or a end user who, who we also call a runner user. Uh, Either way, the license assigned to that user will will control what features the user has access to in Windows Studio. So this this makes it all all a little bit easier to manage all the installations. You don't need to worry about whether uh, which module you need to install. You just install the whole application, and then the license controls what modules the user has access to. The module we will be looking at today is called uh, Transaction, and that's sort of the, the I would guess it's a main main module of Windows Studio. That's the that's the tool we you use to to record trans SAP T codes to automate processes. It's you use it to to create records in SAP to upload data to SAP. You can do a little bit of reading extracting of data with with the transaction module, but for more complex data extraction queries, there's a separate module called Windows Query, which is a it's not based on recordings, it's based on table queries. So it's maybe a, a slightly more technical than transaction, but it's not, not too complex either. And we will have a, another webinar covering the, the basics of, of the query, query module. And the third sort of quite rarely used module is the direct module, which is kind of an alternative to, to the transaction module. Uh, it, it's, it, is very, it is essentially just a different way of building scripts manually based on different different interfaces of SAP. The, the BAP is the, the, the business application programming interfaces and different different function modules, re remote function modules that are built in into SAP. You can leverage those and build manually build scripts. Um, it can be used or, or, or it is commonly used maybe in some rare cases where it's really difficult to record a certain transaction or or just using a, a puppy interface is efficient. Then um, 
then direct might be an option, but it's for most processes, you'll, you'll be fine just using the transaction module, which is what we'll be focusing on, on today. So the, the, the demo and the examples uh, I, I plan to, to share with you today is we'll be going through a, a relatively simple MM02 uh, recording where we want to automate a process where we are uh, updating, doing a mass update of materials in MM02, updating the weight values and a couple of other fields there. So we'll, we'll look at an, um, a, a developer scenario where we'll first go through the recording, record that T code, then we'll create the Excel template, and then we'll look at a few few key things regarding running the script, a little bit about uh, error management perhaps, and then finally, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, a, uh, I'll show, show you the, the, the publishing process, how to publish and how then to, to, to use the Excel add-in to run the script. So the last, last point would be sort of from the end user, the runner user point of view, whereas the first three steps are, are developer tasks. So uh, let me just jump into to Winsdale Studio, and we can then then uh, proceed uh, with the actual product product demonstration here. So <clears throat> I am now now logged into Winsdale Studio here, and uh, you can actually see that from my, that my, my license has uh, I have a license for all the different modules, so they show show up here when I when I click on the on the new button. I have transaction query and direct here. If you only have a license for transaction, then this will be the only only button you see here. But uh, anyway, this will be the transaction module will be the part we'll be focusing on, on today. So I'll, I'll click on that and click on create from SAP recording. So the first thing when we start uh, or before we actually start recording anything is we need to, to log into SAP. I have stored my credentials here. Uh, Winsdale Studio actually reads your SAP, the, the logon file, and brings up a list of all, all the SAP systems that you normally have in your SAP logon pad. But just for convenience sake, I have saved my username and password here. So I'm, I'm looking, looking into to SAP using my uh, normal SAP credentials here. So now we are we are logged into this W6R SAP system. And before we start uh, recording anything, we just need to hear, we need to hear to just to specify uh, what T code it is that we are uh, interested in. So in this case, we'll be going through an MM02 uh, scenario. So I'll, I'll simply type in MM02 here. I don't really need to, to worry too much about the other options here. I'll just stick to the defaults. Those will be fine for our, our sample scenario. And then I'll click on the start recording button here. At this point, WinShuttle will uh, check my SAP authorizations. So now, as the developer, I will need to have, uh, if I want to create a script for MM02, I will need to have authorization to access MM02 in, in SAP. If I don't have, I would get an error here saying that I'm not authorized to do anything with MM02. So this is one of the one of the core concepts of WinShuttle that whatever it is you are doing, you are or we are or WinShuttle Studio is always respecting the SAP security. So you can only only access or, or only do things uh, in SAP that you would normally be able to do by logging in with your username and, and your password using your own credentials. So now. The recording starts. It actually, Visual Studio opens opens up the SAP GUI. It automatically goes into transaction MM02 because we we specified that as the T code when we started the recording. So now we are we will be basically going through. A, you can think of this as kind of like a sample scenario. So if I want to create a script with which I I can update the weight values for thousands of materials. I will just first go through the recording or, or a sample case where I will be modifying the weight values for one single material. And then WinShuttle will be able to repeat those steps for however many materials we want to update. So basically, I will 
select a material here, go to select view. So this is in in in, in a lot of ways this is just like using SAP normally. There are maybe maybe a few things that you will then do differently than you would normally do when using SAP, but uh, those are maybe more advanced cases. For instance, when in the upcoming uh, loop webinar, we'll have a look at how, how to build loops with Wind Shuttle, and then that the way you do the recording, how you use SAP will be different than what you are prob probably normally used to. But for this case, this is a rel relatively simple scenario. So I'll, I'll just select basic data, one of you go here and uh, update a couple of values. So let's say in this example, we wanna update the weight values and then we'll pick pick some other field just to have a, a few more few more fields in our our templates so uh, the weight units for instance we we have gross weight net weight so with with my script I, or or I want to build a script with which I can do a mass update of these values so now now I'll just do this for this one material that we selected here so I could change the gross gross weight value to something else. Let's maybe reduce it by one kilogram. Change the net weight to something else. Uh, now I'm, I'm recording this in a test environment or, or that's how you always want to work with WindShuttle anyway. You wanna do the recordings in a, in a test environment where you can actually make changes and save the changes and then later on run it in, in, in production. So uh, you, you'll either make changes here to some fields or you can actually sort of make kind of like fake changes. So for instance, weight unit, I don't necessarily even have to change this. I could delete the value and put in rekey in the exact same value kilograms. I just want to, to touch that field to make sure that WinShuttle captures the field. It'll be easier for me in the next next phase when we start building the, uh, the Excel template because then, then we will immediately see these fields, whatever fields we touched during the recording will immediately show up in a, in a list there in the, in, the, in the next step. It's not the end of the world if you, if you forget a field from this screen, you, you can add it later on, but it just makes it easier if you make some changes or at least sort of make fake changes to all the fields that you need in your script. So let's say in, in this, on, on, or on this view, the basic data one view, I, all I want is the net weight, gross weight, weight unit. Uh, then let's pick something else. Let's say we wanna pick, some, pick something from the basic data to pay, page or tab, I should say. So we'll navigate to basic data two and uh, let's change the basic material field here to, to something, whatever. And then, um, then you, would, you would keep going like this, go through the, all the tabs, make changes to all the fields that you want to have in your automation script. Uh, for, for this example, I'm happy with these four fields that we picked. So that's all, uh, what I can do is just exit out of here, save the changes, and that uh, concludes the recording portion. It takes a few few, few seconds. In our, in our case, maybe sometimes a little bit longer here because we are working with a remote SAP system. But then anyway, at this point, WinShuttle compiles the data from the recording and creates the automation script for you. And then there we go. That would be sort of a step one of our three-step process. That's the rec recording part. The next part will be the, the so-called mapping phase. So we are now back in WinShuttle Studio. We are now in a tab or page called map. And this is where you build the Excel template. So if you look at the screen here, it's sort, sort of split into two main sections here. You have this top part here where you have all the fields that you touched during the recording. So you see there's material number, cross weight, weight unit, maybe in a slightly different order than, than what we clicked or updated them during the recording, but the fields, the fields are here. And then on the bottom half, let's resize this a little bit. There's a, a blank Excel template. So now what we want to do is uh, create a template or uh, in WinShuttle terms, we want to map Excel columns to SAP fields. So in its, in its simplest form, this is just a matter of dragging and dropping fields. So let, let's say I want in my Excel template, I want, uh, usually we'll start with the material number. So I want to put that in column A in, in Excel down here. So I can just click on somewhere here in a, 
in uh, column A, hold down the mouse button, and then drag it over here to whatever field I want in that column A. So material number, I'll just point to that. And once I let go of the mouse button, the Excel column will be mapped to this SAP field. What that means is that you can see up here, changes material number is now mapped to column A. And if you look at the Excel uh, section down here, you see Winsor uh, Studio automatically created a, a header column, a header cell for this uh, column, which says material number then the, and then the technical name of the field. And then on the second row, it put in whatever value we used during the recording. That was the material I modified during during the, the recording, so it goes here. And uh, now I can keep keep going going like this. So let's say in, in uh, column B, I want to put, let's say, the weight units in, in some order, maybe the net weight first, that makes more sense. So you can map the fields in whatever order makes more sense. So I'll put net weight gross weight, then weight unit. And finally, we had the, the basic material text field uh, on, the, on the basic data two tab. So we can map, drag it to the E column. So there we go. There might be some other fields here. For instance, we actually see a checkbox field here, which has a value of a capital X. This is actually, uh, just how WinShuttle records certain screens. This this is actually where the part where we selected the view. So first we entered the material number, then we selected the basic data view. So I clicked on the basic data one view, and that's actually recorded like this. But we don't even need it in in our Excel here. We can we can leave it as is. But just to keep in mind, there might be some some fields in, in your recording that are, are related to certain SAP controls, like selecting things from a list. But uh, in most, most cases, you wanna, wanna leave them as they are. Basically, that's, that's it for the mapping. There's a little bit of fine tuning you can do here. You can, you can resize the columns here if you want to. Uh, and uh, you can even change the, the headers. It doesn't have to be like this. You could change it to just, modify this to just say material but whatever then makes sense for for the end user so that's what you what you need to keep in mind you are developing a solution for the for the runner users in, in some cases that this is this is now all, all up to you how how your organization wants to use wind shuttle sometimes you you don't have separate developers and separate runner users you have just the developer users who are recording and creating the scripts and running the scripts themselves also but uh, in, in larger organizations, you might want to spread out things so that you have a, a handful of developers who are developing scripts for uh, tens or even hundreds of runner users who, who then will be running the script from Excel. So you, in, in those cases, you really want to think about what makes sense for the runner user whom, who might not even be that familiar with WinShuttle. So you, in some cases, you, you might want to change the, the header, headers here to something uh, that makes it easier for the people to then fill in this template. Most of the time, these the default headers are quite self-explanatory, but uh, that's that's an option you can keep in mind so that you, you can change those, uh, and and you can you can you can do a little bit of fine tuning here. Um, but basically, that's really all you have to do at this point. You just map the fields you want. So these are the fields I want to. Uh, update with my script so that that's it there's one more thing which is actually it's not really mandatory at this point but it will happen automatically if you don't don't do this there's a, a a run log that will go to i guess we can leave it leave it as it is so you can see WinShuttle automatically creates a log column that goes to the first available column in uh, excel so if if I don't map this to anything, uh, it'll automatically go to column F, but you, you'll see when we start running it. So, so let's just skip to the third step, which is to start running our script. But by this point, you probably wanna save your script first. So I'll click on the save button here. And at, at this point, we are, we, are, we are still in the process of developing the script. It's not complete. We haven't tested anything yet. 
and we haven't published the solution. So this means that at this point, we are essentially working with two different files. We have an Excel template, which is a standard Microsoft Excel file. And then we have the script file, which is a .txr file. So when you are developing scripts, you will be working with uh, two different, different files. You have the Excel file separately, and then the script file. And then once, once you are ha satisfied with the testing and you, you, you have ver verified that the script works and does what, what it's supposed to do, then uh, you can later on uh, publish the script, which means that the script file will be embedded into the Excel file. But uh, we'll get to that later. Just keep in mind that at this point, we'll be working with two different files. And uh, I'm just going to be lazy and leave the use the default names here. But normally, you want to think about how you want to label your scripts. Because you, you want to, uh, the, or, or by, by default, the template and the scripts are named like this, so that there's the T code MM02, then there's the date and, and timestamp. But that's that's fine now. So I'll just save both files like so. So now both my files files are saved, and I can I can do some some testing with this. So we are now in the third final step. We are in the in the run tab of Windows Studio now. Uh, we have a one row row of data, one material here. But let's add a couple of more materials. So I'll just drag this down from here. Let's say I want to test this with those five materials. And let's change the weight values to something. Let's say that's going to be 100 and 105. And let's change this to something as well. And then I'll just copy these values. Let's say all these five materials will have the uh, those exact same weight values and uh, the basic material field. I'll, I'll save again. And let's just try running the script and see see what happens. So now you will, once it starts running, you will see that in column F, Winslow will create a, a, a log column. It will add a, a, a header there, and then we'll get these kinds of messages here, like, like so. So if you look at the F column for each row, it now says material ADS401 changed, ADS402 was changed. So we get a, a message from SAP that these values were now updated into or uploaded into SAP and we see an acknowledgement here here in the in the log column and in the actual header of the log we see some more details we see that what what username was used and uh, how long the run took and how many records were updated and, and so on so now these all these weight values were uploaded to all these, or, or all these five materials listed here were up, updated with these new new values in SAP. And we could go, or actually normally what you would want to do is go log into SAP and verify that these are, all the changes were saved correctly and just make sure that everything's, everything's working fine. But at this point, uh, we'll skip that. We'll just trust trust Windshuttle. But I think I'll, what we can do is, uh, let's try running one of these again. Uh, the first one, I'll change this to something, so we have some change here. But this time, instead of just running it normally, I can run it. Let's run it in this debug mode. This is something that you, you normally use when you are having uh, maybe some problems with your script. Uh, you're not getting uh, your script to work correctly. There's some kind of error message there or something. So this is then a really good tool for debugging scripts. So it's that's what it is intended for. But it actually is quite useful to also illustrate what, what Windshuttle is actually doing when you run in a script when you run a script. So let's say I, I want to only run the first first row. So we can we now only run to, to do a debug run for one of these the one of these materials. So this this, uh, what this will then do, it will run the script, but it will actually do it in the foreground. So Windshuttle will actually open up SAP GUI here, and then it will go through the script, run, run the script one step at a time, like a step-by-step -step run. So you can actually see what Windshuttle is, is doing in, in SAP. So it takes a little bit longer for it to start because it's actually 
opening up the, the graphical SAP interface and going into MM02 and bringing it up on the screen. So should pop up shortly. <clears throat> there. So it uh, opens up the SAP GUI and uh, goes into MM02, but this time it also brings up this kind of, uh, I like to call this the control box. <clears throat> So it opens up MM02 and uh, it stops on every every screen. It doesn't uh, run, go through the whole script. It stops here and waits for our input. So we basically just need to acknowledge here to move to the next step. So this is a good way to see what the script is doing because you see that first it's filling in uh, the material number in this field. And if I, let's move this over here. If I click this to move, move to the next step, then you can see that, okay, it's, uh, the script is opening up the view selection screen and we can see it has has selected basic data one view and then i'll click on here again to go to the next next view and here if you look at closely you can see uh, the values are in uh, marked with a, a red color red font here 105 99 kilograms this is to indicate that these three values are values uploaded from excel with WinShuttle. so you can see that on this screen WinShuttle is updating these values, then it's moving on to the next step of the script, coming over here, updating. I guess we didn't change the value in Excel, so it's the same value here. So it's, it, technically it's not a change because the value is already in there. But uh, it comes to the, the basic data two tab and then uh, exits out. Uh, there's the save pop up and then we, the script clicks yes to save the changes. So basically, this is what WinShuttle is doing every time you run the script. It logs into uh, into whatever T code the, the script is created for, goes in, logs in there using your SAP username and password, and then goes through the same steps we have in the recording. But it normally just does it everything does everything in the background for for hundreds or thousands of materials. So it runs much much faster than that. So that's, I said it earlier already, but that's one of the key concepts here that with WinShuttle, we can only do things that we are, first of all, authorized to do. And then secondly, we can only do things that we, we can do in that T code. So I can only, with, with this kind of script, I can only only do whatever things things I can do in MM02. So I can't really bypass or do anything, anything I'm not allowed to or supposed to do in, in SAP. So basically WinShuttle is automating the use of SAP GUI on, on your behalf using your credentials, which also then means that if I now were to log into SAP and go look at this material and look at the, the change history, it would say that this material was changed by, uh, by me. It would show my username there. So SAP doesn't really, it, it doesn't separate whether this was whether the change was made by an actual human person, a user, or by a WinShuttle script, because it's the change was it was made using my username, so that that's what shows up there, which means that the whole the whole audit trail will be will be preserved there, and then people can see that who who it was that up, updated these values. So that's one one <clears throat> one of the key key concepts of of WinShuttle Studio and the, and the transaction module. So that can be something that when you are developing scripts, that's, that could be a good way to also test or help you maybe understand what the scripts, how the scripts are being run to, by running it in the, in the debug mode. But it's mainly, the debug is mainly for, for troubleshooting and it's a really useful tool for, for that as well. For uh, error management, let's say, um, let's make some quick changes here. So I'll just change the net weight for something else for uh, all of these materials. And then uh, let's make an error here. Let's say I change this to a non-existent value so you can see see what happens. <clears throat> so I'll clear the log column here, save, and then I'll just run it normally. So we don't, not in the debug mode, just a normal run. So you can see then how, how the error management works. So now again, Winslow will connect to SAP and start updating these materials via MM02. And then we'll, we'll get a message here in the log column like so. So now we see 
the, the weight values or the materials were successfully updated, the first two ones and the last two ones. But for the, for the middle one, we get this kind of orange uh, log message here, orange, orange to indicate that there's an error here or there was an error on this row. And you can see the error message here saying unit KX is not created in language EN, meaning basically that KX is not a, a valid weight unit, uh, at least not, uh, not in English anyway. So, so this is a, first of all, the, the color coding helps you identify where you have these kinds of errors. So now the, the, the update of this material failed. So none, none of these values or changes were saved. If we got an error, it would not save uh, the, the material data. So uh, now for what you would not first do is actually then fix the error. Okay, so we could go and we would change this the erroneous uh, weight unit to something that's actually a valid value, like so. Now, <clears throat> I could just run the script again, process all five uh, materials, but I already know that the first two ones were successfully updated in SAP and as, as well as the last two ones. So it's sort of a waste of time processing all the five, uh, five materials again. Uh, maybe in this case, it doesn't take that long because you see here, it, for me, it took nine seconds to e execute the script. But let's imagine I had uploaded or updated 2000 materials and I had five errors, errors with five materials in the, in the, in the whole, uh, whole data set. It would, would take, uh, take some time to reprocess all 2000 records and it would be a, a sort of waste of processing time. So we, what we want to do is just concentrate on the errors and just basically ignore all the others, the materials that were already successfully updated in SAP. And for that purpose, there's a built-in uh, option here. So instead of just clicking the run button, I can click on the little arrow here to bring up uh, like this kind of context menu where we have a different option here called run only error rows. So what this does is it uh, runs the script, but it actually skips all the records that were already successfully updated previously. And it only focuses on the rows where we had errors. And then it will process those rows. So in this case, we see the script processed material alias 403. And now we got a success message here. And in addition to that, it uh, changed the background color to green to indicate that this, uh, this was a row where we had an error on it earlier and now the error was fixed and now everything is fine. So the, just the, the color coding alone makes it easier to, to see where the errors are and whether the errors were fixed, even, even if you have a, have a long list of material data here in, in Excel. So that uh, that will be useful when you are doing mass uploads and you have might have an error here or there. You don't have to run through the or process everything again. You can just focus on the errors, and that's a, a re really really simple uh, like a er er automated error management tool for that. Another uh, thing that might be uh, useful sometimes. That is really easy to use. Let's just change the value to something else again. So we are actually making some changes here. So I'll change the net weight for all of my test materials here. And let's clear the logs. There's an option here at the top uh, called uh, backup data, which is just a simple checkbox. If I enable it, well, let's just see what happens. I'll, I'll try running running the script and if you actually then you can maybe focus on uh, down here you see it says sheet one there's one sheet in my excel this one single page sheet of uh, excel uh, sorry material data but now since i have the backup data option enabled when i run my script before WinShadow uploads these new values to sap it actually cr creates a backup copy of the old values and creates a new sheet here called BK for backup, and then there's the timestamp date and time. And on that tab, it will store the the values we had in SAP before we 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 uploaded um, these new values. 
So this is a, a simple way to back up things before you upload changes there. So before I uploaded the new new net weight, we got a backup copy of the old net weight, 98 kilograms. So if I then later on realized I made a mistake or just change, changed my mind, or maybe I wasn't supposed to use update that, those materials, I could then run the script again with the old old values. So it's a it's a really really easy way to just take a quick quick backup of the existing data before you upload any any changes into to SAP. There are of course uh, quite a few few more different different options here in in Windows Studio and uh, and like like I said in the in the upcoming webinars we'll be looking at the more more advanced features but a, a simple script could be or de developing a simple script simple solution like this it could be could be something as simple as as this you just do a recording then you do the mapping which can be just a matter of dragging and dropping fields then you test it with a couple of materials maybe check in sap to v verify that the values were up updated correctly and then then that's it for the development uh, of the of the script then you have a working script on your hands So uh, this could be it for 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 the development phase. One, one final step we can do, and I mentioned this earlier, we can now publish this script. So let's say I'm now happy with the solution. It's it's doing what I want it to do, and uh, I have tested and verified it. Uh, I'll, I'll just actually leave all this data here just for for convenience sake. But uh, to make it easier for for the end users, the runner users to use this, uh, we can, what we can do is we can publish the script here by clicking on the publish button here. So what uh, happens here is uh, it opens up this, this kind of simple dialog where we can select the, or specify a name for our script and then there's the, the Excel, Excel data file. And, and this is what I was talking about earlier. So at, at, at up until now, we've been working with two different files. We had the script file, and then we had the Excel file, the data file separately. So what the publishing does, it actually takes the script file and embeds it into the Excel file. So now, and, and then if I wanted to now distribute this to to uh, 100 different runner users, uh, I would just publish the file, and then all I'll need to do is uh, send the users the Excel template or or put it on a... On a, on a SharePoint site or um, in or a network folder, whatever, whatever you is your preferred method. Uh, I think some of you are actually using the WinShuttle Foundation, which is a sort of a, a server script repository. It, it does a few other other things, but then basically you are you are submitting scripts to the WinShuttle Foundation site. But the, the end result will be the will be the same. The scripts will be embedded into the Excel files, and then the, all the runner users need is the is the excel file maybe at this point let's let's change this the name of the script to something let's call it mm02 weight underscore update just to to make it clear for the for the end, end users that this is this is what the script will be doing it'll it'll be using mm02 to update weight values but other than that, there's really not much here. I just click uh, the publish button, and WinShuttle will embed uh, our our scripts to the the Excel template. So let's uh, have a have a look at the at the Excel template uh, and the the Excel add-in. So I'll go ahead and close close uh, WinShuttle uh, Studio here, and I'll, I'll open up our Excel file our data file that we just created. So it's a, it's a standard uh, Microsoft Excel file that we just created. <clears throat> so now, uh, now we would be looking at this from the, from the runner user point of view. So the developer has created a template and a script for us. They have published it and now they, maybe they put the script on a, on a, on a, on a network drive somewhere and I, I downloaded it to my, my PC and because and, I want to run the script to update material weight values. 
And now the, the, the end users don't really even uh, necessarily need to know that much about WinJuddle. All they really need, they need to have WinJuddle installed, WinJuddle Studio, and they need to have a license uh, to be able to run scripts. But other than that, as long as they have the Excel template, they can run the script directly from uh, inside Excel. Because once WinShuttle Studio is installed, it will install this WinShuttle Excel add-in as well. So I can click on the on the tab here that says WinShuttle Run. There will be a log on to WinShuttle button that I'll need to need to click and to to actually connect to to WinShuttle, and it'll basically check my license at this point. <clears throat> but uh, once that's uh, done, we'll uh, We'll we'll see the full full WinShuttle uh, Excel add-in here here where we can actually run the script. Our script shows up here in, in this little drop-down menu. It, it is possible to actually have multiple different scripts em embedded into the same template if you want to use a same tem single template to do uh, multiple things, work with multiple scripts. But we have just this one script here, and the, here it shows the the, whatever name we specified earlier when we published this. So I called my script mm02 wait update. So that's what it how it appears in a, in a, in the Excel add-in as well. So this is important so that the the Excel users, the runner users, actually know what this. Especially if you have multiple templates, multiple scripts, and uh, it just makes it easier for people to to know what what script does what. If you use some kind of good naming convention for your scripts. And then we have some run options here. Basically, most of these are the same options uh, we see in, uh, that we saw in WinShuttle Studio, but now it's all, all here in the, the Excel template. And I could just now start running it from directly from inside Excel here. Let's make one final change, change our net weight value again, save it, and then just uh, click on the run button here to, to test it from inside, inside Excel. Now, again, as the runner user, I will also need to log into SAP and my credentials will also be checked. So both the developer user will need the proper authorizations as well as the runner users. So I will need to, as the runner user, have also access to MM02. Otherwise, Winchell will give me an authorization error here. But then the, the rest of it is, is pretty much similar to what we already saw in Studio. Windsor will run the script. Uh, I think we left the backup option on, so it will create a new backup sheet here, another sheet, and then it will, will get an acknowledgement here in the, in the log column showing that these materials were, were updated in, in SAP. So this makes it really easy for, for the, the runner users to run scripts directly from from within Excel. All they need is the Excel template. And then as long as they, they know how to fill in data into the Excel template and know, know how to click the, the run button here, that's, that's pretty much the minimum that they need to know to be able to execute scripts. That's really all, all there is to it. So the, this, this concludes the, the demonstration. This is what I wanted to share with you today. So, uh, Script development in its simplest form, it, it, can, it, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than this. For something relatively simple like our scenario today, it really doesn't even take that long. You could create a script like ad hoc, like, like this in a, in a matter of minutes, and then have a working solution uh, to, to, to update some values in SAP. And uh, now we looked at MM02, but it doesn't really matter what the, the process or T code is. It could be anything related to could be master data related, could be transaction data, f financial data, sales orders, whatever. The, pro the development process is, is always the same. Uh, you start with the recording, uh, you actually record the, the T code, then you build the Excel template, and you start testing and, and running scripts. Of course, there are more, more complex scenarios. It does get a little bit more complex, but this is sort of a good, a good primer, good introduction to, to what what WinShuttle is and what what kind of things you can can do with uh, with WinShuttle. We have a couple of more minutes left, so if there are any any questions, you can feel free to 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 go ahead and ask ask away. 
otherwise you can you can later on always send any any questions comments to our our support email address support at agiletech.com and if you want to want to learn more we have uh, training videos and uh, some training material available on our our website agiletech.com slash training there's some um, some uh, more more um, uh, detailed uh, training videos there that you can w watch at your your convenience as well as some pdfs related to those and uh, we'll be we'll be also like i said i'll we'll we'll upload this recording uh, uh and, and make it available, available online as well so if you want to review this this later on But uh, that's really all I I wanted to share with you today. If there aren't any any questions at the moment, please don't hesitate to contact us later. Uh, at us later, uh, if anything anything comes comes up. Uh, next week we'll have a, have another follow up webinar, and we'll, where we'll be looking at uh, at loops, and then then some additional webinars where we'll be diving into the some of them a little bit more complicated gated things but but for now i i hope that this has been uh, educational for you and you now if you have were not already familiar with Windjadal, you hope you now uh, at least have a, a good basic understanding of what Windjadal studio and what what you can do with the especially the transaction module which was our focus today All right then. So I don't uh, see. Any, I'm just checking the chat here as well. Don't see any any questions here. So uh, so in that case, thank you everybody for for joining today. Um, we'll we'll talk again next week if you are joining the next session. And I'll I'll wish you all a a good day. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye bye.